Welcome to CFRI Cystic Fibrosis Community Voices, a video podcast series created by and for the cystic fibrosis community. I'm going to make this a little interactive. I know you've been sitting, you don't have to stand up and do jumping jacks, but we'll just get to know each other a little bit. Okay. Just let me organize my life here. So, like they introduced me, my name is Dr. Chelsea Toth, and I have my doctorate in clinical social work. Um, a little bit about me is that I was a pediatric social worker at a cystic fibrosis center for about five years before I went on um, and got my doctorate. Not close enough. Can you hear me now? Okay, let me start over. So I'm Dr. Chelsea Toth, and before I got my doctorate in social work, I was a pediatric social worker for about five years um, out in Pennsylvania. So it really is what got me researching young adults with CF. So today we're gonna talk about young adults with CF, which we know can happen. A lot of the conversations we're gonna have can really impact adolescents, can impact people in later adulthood too. So just keep that in mind. So, connecting the dots, bridging the gap between isolation and social connection. I have no relationships to disclose for this presentation. So let's start off. I like to pace when I present, so if I back away from the microphone too far, just somebody holler at me. And those of you online, welcome. Hopefully I'll talk loud enough that you can hear me also. Okay, let's start off for a minute. You can close your eyes or keep them open, but imagine you're with your best friend. You're sitting in one of your favorite places having a conversation. So just take a moment to go there, wherever that place is. It can be in a coffee shop, on the beach, or in your kitchen. Wherever you are, think about that space. Think about your surroundings, what's going on. So just take a moment to be with your best friend in this location. Now hold on to that place and that image because we're going to come back to it in a few moments. So if you close your eyes, you can open your eyes again and let's continue. So what is isolation and social connection and how does that have an impact? So there's a lack of human connection for individuals with CF, which is a real issue that researchers are finally beginning to explore. We've done a lot of research based in the sciences. Now let's look at the human impact that it actually has on these individuals living with cystic fibrosis. So individuals with CF, we know, aren't able to interact face-to-face -face with individuals not living in, with CF. So in theory, this gives them millions of options, right? There's millions of people in the world. Why can't they just interact with somebody else? However, when somebody faces challenges with their disease or wants someone to be able to listen with a genuine understanding of their lives, they lack that ability to connect through companionship. Right? Other diseases, they have support groups. Diabetes, there's a diabetes support group. Asthma, there's an asthma face-to-face -face support group. Crohn's and colitis, there's this face-to-face -face support group. But we don't have that with CF. Right? Historically, people with CF used to come together for summer camps and used to get together until, oh, all of a sudden there's this research that they're exchanging this really harmful bacteria and getting together is making them sicker. Okay? Really great for scientific impacts, but how does that now impact these individuals who can't come together face to face with somebody else living with their disease? Connection, as defined by Dr. Brene Brown, connection is the energy that is created between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment. How many of you in this room know who Brene Brown is? Let me raise a hand. A couple of you that I can see. 
good. For those of you who don't know, Brene Brown, she's a researcher, storyteller, social worker. And her research is on vulnerability and shame and courage. So if you haven't looked into her, she has some great TED Talks and it's not related to CF, but it's just related to being a human. So write that down on your little notepad there for something for you to do after this presentation. So my research, I interviewed young adults with CF aged 18 to 25 and they were diagnosed at various ages. Some of them were diagnosed when they were newborns or very young, and others were diagnosed later as 11-year-olds, as teenagers. Um, and really, in my research, a lot of the dialogue is similar, regardless of when they were diagnosed. And we know, and it's been reiterated to us, that the Infection Prevention and Control Guidelines, they say to separate individuals with CF by six feet due to that risk of cross-infection. So my study examined the impact of these guidelines um, and the recommendations on young adults living with CF. It was a qualitative, exploratory, grounded theory approach, which I used to understand the experience, the impact of social isolation. Does anybody know what qualitative research is, sort of a foreign language? A couple of you? Good. So quantitative research is very scientific. That's where they talk about the graphs. You were just showing a bunch of graphs and numbers and data. Okay. Qualitative is all about voice and conversations. And we look for themes and when people talk about very similar patterns. So I'm going to really let the research speak for itself and you'll hear some direct quotations. So let's get back to that exercise with your best friend. Okay. Go back to where you were in the kitchen or in the coffee shop. So think about that again for a second. Okay, you all back with your best friends. Now think about it from this perspective. You both have CF and you can't be within six feet of each other due to the risk of cross infection. How does that impact your relationship? The conversation you were having could really only occur using the phone, FaceTime, text messaging, social media, the internet. For those of you living with CF, this is your reality. So taking that, we are going to now look at what do young adults with CF have to say. So the quotations that are going to be throughout this presentation come directly from the individuals that I researched and that I interviewed. So I'm really going to let the research speak for itself. I just want to fit it in. Young adults discuss CF as this invisible illness this fitting in as a nomenclature of being similar to their peers, similar to peers who don't have the disease, right? For those of you who were here last night, Dr. Reed mentioned, if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist, right? This idea that talking about CF gives voice to acknowledging the fact that I have CF, that I have something different from some of my peers. I don't want to stand out because of CF. I want to stand out for being cool. I want to stand out for being able to do dance or to sing or to write. I don't want to stand out because I have CF. This idea of striving for normalcy, which I'll talk about more in a couple minutes. Normalcy for some people means not coughing in public. It means not having to take all of these medications, not having to do all of these two hours, four hours of treatments or having tune-ups and going to the hospital. For some people, that's their normal. Fitting in, not being singled out. You're comfortable in your own skin. I like to stand out for being outspoken or being really smart. I don't want to stand out for being sick.
You wouldn't know I have CF just by interacting with me or looking at me. This goes along with that invisible illness, right? You look at me, I look like everybody else. There's nothing that says I have CF. Now I don't have CF and I'm a professional just trying to tell you what it means like for these young adults. But if I didn't tell you I don't have CF, you wouldn't know if I had CF or if I don't have CF. Right? And that's the point that these young adults are really trying to prove, is that it is an invisible illness, like so many others. Because one good thing about cystic fibrosis is that if I really want to, I can blend in with everybody else. I can look so normal. I always refuse to wear the mask, because I just like to feel normal. I just want to be normal. I'm trying so hard. When you're in the clinic, it's like, maybe I'm the sick person, maybe I'm waiting for the sick person. Nobody knows. And that makes me feel like I'm a little bit closer to normal. Like maybe I can just blend into the background. I remember interviewing this young woman she was very passionate about this. And this is something that the guidelines really impacted her life. Because when she goes to clinic, what's the very first thing they say? Put on your mask, right? In some clinics, in the clinic that I used to work for, if the room was open, we'd say, you come in and we put you right into the room so you didn't have to sit in the waiting room. And sometimes that's possible and sometimes it's not possible, right, logistically. But this was something she was very adamant about. Okay, sometimes you have these CF passports where you take them with you and say, I go to my pulmonology office, you automatically put on a mask. But if you're going to GI, sometimes they go to GI and nobody knows I have CF, so why do I have to put on a mask? Because I'm in GI, I'm not at pulmonary today. Right? Okay, it's that whole thing of, it's an invisible illness. I just wanna fit in, I just wanna be normal. Why does, why does this doctor's office need to know that I need to wear a mask? Because they're not looking at my lungs. I don't have to do any PFTs today, right? It's that difference. So she was very passionate about this meaning. There are definitely people who just get it and some who don't. Right, this goes back to last night, Reed was also talking about how he didn't tell his friends. And there are a lot of individuals with CF, from children to adults, that don't tell their friends. Because what happens when I do? What happens when I tell my friends? What happens when I don't tell my friends, and then I do tell them and they don't want to be friends with me anymore? Right? I do tell them, they treat me like I'm different. So it's this balance. Who do you tell? Some people don't tell their family, right? Because some people get it and there are definitely people who don't. So living with that knowledge. Not to assume that everybody who has CF is going through the exact same thing because it can be very different, right? People who live with CF, there's different versions of it. Right? Some have GI involvement, some have more sinus involvement, some have cystic fibrosis related diabetes. If we think about all the different physiological implications that it has, and then think about all the social implications that it also has. Right? Because some people, they don't care who knows they have CF. Right? Everybody knows that person has CF. Versus somebody else who it's very private and they don't wanna talk about it. Or maybe they did talk about it and it didn't go well. And so I'm not gonna tell anybody else because I told one person and it didn't go so well. So just thinking about the physical impact and the social impact, okay? And then also this isolation, sometimes it's imposed. I'm isolated by choice. I don't tell people because it's my choice. And allowing people to have that choice gives them their power back. My entire life I've managed to make friends. 
most of them have to understand about CF and all the treatment. This young woman, she talked about sleepovers and how it was really important as a middle schooler that what do they do on the weekends? They have sleepovers. Well, sometimes she couldn't go to a sleepover. Or sometimes before she can go to a sleepover, she'd have to come home and do her treatments. And then she didn't want to have to bring her vest to her friend's house. Right? So thinking about all of these barriers, I have to go do my NEBS, I have to do my vest, I have to do this, I have to take my enzymes, I have to do all of these things. And as a provider, you know, having the conversation of, you need to balance that. What's the impact if you go one night without doing your treatment? Some providers would say, you have to do it every day regardless. Is that a reality? Is that possible? Do sometimes you skip your treatments? because something more fun happens? Yes, and we know that as providers. We're gonna give you the best advice possible and say these are our recommendations, but real life happens, and we, we understand that, right? These young adults, they talked about things also, like you're going on dates or you're in college and you're doing all of these other activities that are much more fun than doing treatments and trying to fit them in and how to balance that. Right, last night they talked about the vest sounds like a vacuum cleaner, okay? You might think, well, I might actually want to vacuum over doing my vest treatment because sometimes vacuuming looks like more fun than a treatment, right? Depending on where you're at. It would be nice, though, to have a CF friend that you could hang out with because they would understand. Again, the people who understand you, you can't spend time with, right? It's becoming a theme here. You see the trend where we're at? Okay, this is really the impact of those guidelines that they have on young adults. Okay, so we're going to get back to being a little interactive. We're going to do an exercise with your neighbor. Some of you are at tables by yourself, so with the a near person. So turn to the person sitting next to you, okay, and introduce yourself. Now, this is a conference and you usually sit with people you know. So introduce yourself to somebody you don't know. Okay, you don't have to shake hands, just smile at each other. Okay, say hello. Now, Say hello to somebody you don't know at your table. Here you go, meet somebody new. Okay, I'm gonna do the wave. That's how I get it. Ready? Okay, focus on me for a second before we go off track here. You're with me? You wanna clap? I'll wave, I do the wave. Wave back at me when you're ready. Very good, this is how I get my students to pay attention. So what I want you to do is I want you to tell this person something interesting about you, but I want you to observe their reaction. Discuss what's working for you, what's not, something interesting, but observe their facial expressions, their nonverbal behaviors. I'm gonna time you, I'll give you a couple minutes to have this conversation. Okay, and then come back to me. So go ahead, have a conversation with your neighbor.
Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Okay, start to wrap up your conversations. Okay, wrap them up. I'm going to wave at you again. Very nice. Thank you so much. Very good. That was very good. That table did excellent. So think about this. Think about what you observe. So walking around watching you, a lot of you talk with your hands, right? There's a lot of big movements and gestures going on, facial expressions, right? You can see if somebody, some of you, I could just gauge by your facial expressions, you're talking about something more serious, right? Very in the moment. Some people were very serious. And other people were laughing, right? Looks like a really good story. Okay, so just think about those gestures and facial expressions and how much that connection between two humans who you might have known before this or you may not have and how that impacted you, right? But think about that from the perspective of living with CF, right? You don't know the medical history of the person sitting next to you or within your vicinity. You're learning an interesting fact about this person who may or may not have CF. We know, because you're at the conference, by the way, that the person with CF has a blue dot, so it kind of gives it away for this exercise. So we know that for you know infection prevention control guidelines. But think about this in general when you're in the community. How do you know somebody has CF? Right? It's not like it's a banner tattooed on somebody's forehead, like, oh, hey, by the way, I have CF. Right? That's not something you know about somebody else, okay? So if you were living with CF, you couldn't have this type of interaction with somebody else or be in the same space. Now let me say this, you could have this type of interaction, but knowing about the guidelines and knowing the recommendation is not to be within six feet of another person who has CF, then it's a conscious, educated choice to make because at the end of the day it's your right it's your choice to decide how well you interpret the guidelines or what your interpretation is and how it suits your lifestyle as a person living with CF right so to keep that in mind too so thank you very much for playing you all did a great job gold stars all around 
So we're going to transition a little and keep to the topic of this face-to-face -face conversation. So a young adult says, I'll read blogs on cystic fibrosis website all the time, and I love hearing other people's stories, but I don't interact. At the end of the day, I'd like to have a face-to-face -face conversation with someone, which is what you all just did. I wish I could be able to communicate face-to-face. -face. I'm not a big texting person. I like talking to people. I like sitting down and having a conversation. It's hard to do that when we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to, but there's big precautions and big consequences that could come out of it, right? This is a young adult, okay? A lot of the pushback now is, well, teenagers and young adults like social media and they like texting and there's all this technology, which is true, but it still doesn't replace that human connection, right? At the end of the day, it's about that connection. I know I would never interact with other CF people physically within real life. People with CF aren't supposed to be within close proximity of each other for risk of passing lung infection or bacteria back and forth. Be really cautious when you're around other people with CF and avoid it if possible. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. So this young woman who I interviewed, she told me a story about her and her sister were hospitalized, they both had CF and they were hospitalized. They had never met anybody else who also had CF. And they found out that there was a girl down the hall who was in, um, she also had cystic fibrosis, and they thought, we have never met somebody else who has CF besides the two of us. And I think because this other girl was very sick, she was having a really serious exacerbation. And they thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we could go and meet this other girl with CF? And so they did. They gowned and gloved and put on their mask and they went down the hallway and they met this girl um, who was very sick and they had um, conversations and it was really good for their morale. It was very good for them to say, I met somebody else and you know, we're in here for a tune up but we're pretty healthy so hopefully you get better soon and they just had this connection. So they said, she said, I felt like we were taking necessary precautions and that it was okay. The three of us were all okay with it. So ultimately, that's who it's up to, right? Again, it's that choice to make that decision. Now, disclaimer, she did go on to talk about that her medical team was not very happy with her for going into this other hospital room. Um, they were not happy, but again, they took the precautions that they thought was necessary. I didn't ask and I don't know if they cultured anything funky, I didn't get that far. But I just know that there was pushback from her uh, medical team after this meet and greet. Now this is a young woman who talks about having a really close friend who actually has CF and the challenges that go along with that relationship. It's hard because we want to go out to eat or we want to do something, but we can't be in a close, confined space. So we have to be outside or we have to just talk on the phone because we can't be in the same room for an extended period of time. It sucks because the people who understand me and know what I'm going through, and that could be my biggest support system, can't spend time with. Right, biggest support system they can't spend time with. Right, and again, think back to all these other chronic illnesses that have a face-to-face -face support system. So this is my last exercise, okay, last exercise. So take a moment to think about a time in your life when you felt judged by another person. It's happened to all of us in this room, so think about one time that you felt judged. Were you sneezing? Could be something as simple as sneezing at the wrong time, okay? 
Did you wear something and felt it was the wrong setting, like a bathing suit to a black tie affair or something? Right? Maybe you said the wrong thing during a presentation and like these silly exercises, something like that. But we've all had a time in our lives when we've felt different or judged or just maybe we weren't being judged, but our perception was that somebody else was judging us for some reason. So regardless of when you felt judged by another, several young adults with CF describe this feeling of social isolation through perceived judgment and this wanting to be, quote, normal, right? Because really, there is no one definition of normal. I felt isolated from the general public a lot. Going back to what Reed said last night, he mentioned always having an excuse for CF, right? Always having this excuse. I just have a cold. Excuses are very common, okay? Especially in the general public, right? Somebody has a cough and all of a sudden it's, oh, are you sick? The general public a lot is, has a sphere of getting sick. The sphere of everything is contagious. Right, and how to explain that? I just have a cough, it's just mucus in my lungs, it's not contagious, right? Not having to worry all the time about catching something or having a coughing fit in public and getting weird looks from people. I was coughing in public and somebody gave me a dirty look. Don't judge me, I have this lung disease. But by then, they're gone. And you're stuck this, with this feeling that People are judging you constantly. I know I'm not sick when I can laugh without coughing. Right? The same thing with being judged and going along with that coughing. When somebody can laugh or, and not cough. Right? I remember this conversation with her and she said, I don't like when people are funny and I don't like to watch comedy movies or stand-up because she was telling a story about how her boyfriend took her to a stand-up comedy show and she coughed so much because she was laughing that she had to go in the bathroom and she threw up. Right? So she knows she's not sick when she can laugh without coughing. Normal. My definition of normal is not having to get up and do the treatments and all the medicine. My normal is getting up and going to work and then doing my treatments and all that because my activity is different from yours doesn't mean we are completely different. Despite the disease, these young adults with CF persevere. They live the lives, their lives the best that they can. And many of them strive for this definition of normalcy, right? Getting college degrees, getting married, getting a job, fitting in, right? We all have our own definition of normal for us. Somebody's timing me, I might do a little dance. That's okay. So before I tell you what you can do about this, Right, I'll leave you with one final quotation from a young adult. I would definitely not be the same person I am today if it wasn't for CF. So what can you do? What does all of this mean? I just told you a lot of quotations and a lot of information from the perspective of somebody living with CF. So what can you do as parents or spouses or caregivers or friends or whatever your role is in the lives of somebody living with CF. You can listen without problem solving. Because a lot of the times when we hear a story that knee-jerk reaction is to fix it. But sometimes it's not about fixing it, it's about listening. And there's a great YouTube video 
I'm giving you some more homework. It's called, It's Not About the Nail. So if you've seen this video, right, it's not about the nail, okay? It's about a young woman, spoiler alert, that has a nail in her head, and she's talking to her significant other, and she's telling a story about the day. Um, but it's not about the nail, right? It's not about having CF. Sometimes you just want somebody to listen, and it doesn't always have to come back to them having this chronic illness because they're still a human and they have human emotions and they go through lives the same way, right? So sometimes stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to problem solve and just listen, right? Understand there are challenges. Some of the challenges are similar and some of the challenges are gonna be different. Be open to their suggestions, right? Be open if they say, you know, this treatment regimen isn't working for me, or this schedule isn't working for me, because they are their own experts, right? They come to you for advice, they come to you for medical treatment, they come to you, you know, whatever role you have, but they are the experts of their own lives. So be open when they say, how will we do try something different? Be creative with planning, right? Listen, but also be creative, and develop reasonable goals. Right? Goals are important not just when we're working with kids, but when we're working with young adults and adolescents and adults. Goals are important throughout the lifespan, but we want to make sure they're reasonable. We don't want to say set a really lofty goal that we know is unrealistic. Right? Make sure they're reasonable. Participate in activities. Many centers offer support for parents and families. Um, go local and ask your CF center. A lot of CF centers have family advisory boards, family advisory support that you can get on to them. They have different support groups you can participate in. Um, living with CF, a lot of centers have their own center-specific social media to get on that's only within their center. Some centers have a peer mentoring program, so really ask the questions, what does your center offer? And if it's not at your center, sometimes there are other centers that have this information. Right? Ask your social workers. We have a great social work list serve that's out there, and sometimes there's opportunities for you to connect with other people who have CF um, or connect with other spouses or other parents. But you gotta ask. Ask the questions. Ask your social workers. Okay. Here's a plug for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I don't know if you're familiar with, they have these mini cons, so the next one is on transplant, and I just learned all about transplant, so the next one um, is on August 15th. Registration is still open. So if you're not familiar with these mini cons, the goal is to provide an opportunity to connect um, with other individuals with CF. It was started by a group of adults with CF, so some of the events are only for adults with CF, and others of them are for um, parents or significant others um, or family members. If anybody is interested in um, helping plan or facilitate any of these events, um, Daniel Cipriani at the foundation is the person in contact. So touch base with me after this presentation. I can give you her contact information. Um, she's the one who runs these sort of mini events, so please let me know if you're interested in that. And I didn't list all of CFRI has amazing events. I didn't put them in here to list all of them because there's a lot of material in all of the rooms that have them out there in the lobby. So please reach out through the foundation or through CFRI or through your center because there are a lot of resources out there and sometimes it's hard to find good resources, right? Find very valuable information. So just make sure that you do. So some of my key takeaways. Again, provide an opportunity to listen without problem solving. Be aware that all young adults living with CF have unique experiences and perceptions. It's really important to identify these barriers to isolation and discuss the importance of connection. All right, so you have an idea just for sitting with me for the last hour about why is it important 
and getting an idea of what do individuals with CF have to say and really making their voice heard. And it's really important that we continue to do research and develop these networks for individuals living with CF and their families like this. CFRI has brought us together here for a great opportunity to network and meet other individuals to have this shared connection and this shared experience. And those of us online, you get to join us too and can come together, right, and really get this deeper understanding. So final parting words from a wise young adult living with CF. The only thing we can do is live for the moment and live for us. Thank you for paying attention. If you have any questions, feel free to step up to the microphone.